Good morning and welcome to week number two of our With Us Easter series. And thinking about With Us, Ezra and I got out last weekend on the ice after church, which we might have given up that information by the picture we threw out inadvertently. And we thought, what could go wrong, right? You know, it's been warm, like 60, you know, a couple days before that. What could go wrong? So Ezra runs down to the lower pond to grab some equipment on the ice. He's like, hey, if I'm gone more than 10 minutes, I'm probably gone. I was like, yeah, okay, you'll be fine. So I got snow plowing, you know, the, my driveway because there was snow last week. I remember that Sunday. And then I snow plowed uh, Caleb's place. And about 15 minutes in, I thought, where's Ezra? He's not back yet. So I drove madly up to the entrance to the lower pond, threw myself out of the truck, and jumped over the top, and I said, Ezra! And that's what I heard. Nothing. Ezra! <laughs> Nothing. Now I'm panicked, I grab my phone, I start sprinting towards the pond, amen? So, part way down, I pulled a muscle in my left thigh, thought I was gonna go down, and then, I got back up and I realized there's only one set of tracks in the snow and it's going that way. Ezra! Get down to the pond, nobody. I call my wife. Honey, have you seen Ezra? He's gone. And there's only one set of tracks. Was well, that you walking up the driveway? I said, no, I'm at the pond. You can't see me. If that's Ezra, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> Isn't that how we respond when somebody's like missing and then you find out they're alive and you're like, I'm going to kill you. You scared me. So that happened to us this weekend. And then we thought, oh yeah, for your sake, he walked up back to grandma and grandpa's house, which is an alternative way across the bridge. I figured there was no need to go past grandma and grandpa's house, but he had a need. So, and he didn't have his phone. So then he caught this, which is nice. I don't have the clicker. Oh, I do. <laughs> he caught this, this, that. So yeah, we had a good time. So after I got scared to death, and I was, <laughs> I love you, man. Don't scare me like that again. So that's uh, that's my fun illustration of the week. But you know what? Sometimes we take for granted those who are with us. Amen. Amen. And even in the flesh, take that extra moment to hug somebody, look them in the eye, give them that deep smile and says, I really appreciate you in my life. I don't think we do that enough, amen? Amen. 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 Now try it in your few a second. Try it. If you're sitting next to somebody you appreciate, even you don't, just give it a try. Here we go. <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> All right, that's great. Grab your Bible, so say it like we mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. Lord, I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Lord, help us to be receptive to your Word today. To catch everything you have for me. Help me to be on the edge of my seat, God. What do you have for me? And I want to obey. I want to hear. I want to listen. I want to get all of it absorbed. And change my heart, oh God. And pray in your name. Amen? Amen? All right. So, um, seeing how you voted unanimously, uh, somebody actually in, in our uh, Wednesday evening deep love segment said, said these words, Did you win? <laughs> and I said, What? Did we win what? You know, the whole vote thing. Did you win? Like, no, no, that's a, maybe, I don't know. She won. But, I, you know, then it went into this. Did everybody know that if you voted her in, you actually voted me in too? Yes. And if, maybe some of you want to revote based on that knowledge. So, so uh, since it worked so well last week that she spoke and we got a unanimous vote, I'm going to allow her to speak again. How's that? Wow. I'm going to allow her. Oh, I knew. Oh, you're going to allow her? Okay. All right. No, I'm going to. 
I'm going to just shut up now and let her speak. What was that, Judy? I said you need a couple more weeks of deep. I need a couple more weeks of humility, and yeah, I'll be right back here. Thank you. Oh, I love you too, dear. <laughs> well, last week, I good morning. Everybody's smiling at me. Last week, I encouraged you to read Psalm 23 every morning and to do that. How'd that go for you? Did some of you do that? I heard some testimonies where some of you were really encouraged by that, and that really helped you. You know, I didn't get it out and read it, to be honest, but I, as I laid in bed before I got up, I, I thought through it, and I didn't just do the whole thing. I just thought through the part we focused on. And I just said, thank you, Lord, for being my shepherd. And I just thought through that and just got that. So, you know, please don't be legalistic about this and get like, oh, I didn't get it out and do exactly. You know, just relax and enjoy the experience of what it feels like to have him be your shepherd. You know, I've got some inspiration from one of our younger um, parts of our family. Um, Haven, where's Haven? I just saw her. Is she there? Is she hiding? Oh, did she go just downstairs? I just saw her. Okay, so Jess texted me, a, well, it was just a few days ago that you found it or something. So, what? Haven? Or, oh, there's Haven. Okay, no, sorry. All right. <laughs> so, way to embarrass her. Okay. Um, so, Jess texted me, and she was like, I just walked into Haven's room and saw this hanging on the wall. Now, I got a picture of it. It is hard to see from a distance, so I'm going to read it to you. It's a piece of notebook paper, and it says, Say every day, Psalm 23, Lord is my shepherd. There's your inspiration. Thank you, Haven. I didn't tell her to do that either. Sure you're encouraging us. Jess did not tell her to do that. I was getting that. her laundry off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was going in to... Right, but that was just such a nice... Uh, like, oh, you know, and, and if you need a reminder, write it on a sticky note. It doesn't have to be, you know, it, it's, it's just perfect the way it is. So, the Lord is my shepherd. My mom is my maid. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a small print. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Well, before we get to um, to the verse four, you know this this ver this psalm has so much packed in it. We're going to do only one verse today, and I'm so excited about it because it is one that I think we all have struggled with. And it's verse 4, but in order to really grasp the hold of what's going on, we need to look at verses 1 through 3 again. So we're going to say them together like we did before, only there's something very important. There's a shift here, and it's something very important I want you to notice. So here we go. We're going to start with verse 1. It is in your bulletins if you want to follow along there. It will be on your screen. So read along with me. We're going to start, like I said, with verse 1, and we're going to start even with that top line because I feel that that's part of the psalm itself because remember who's the beloved yeah. right what does David mean sorry I should have said that first David means beloved, beloved. I gave it away didn't I and who is the beloved just David oh, no. no all of us if you are made in the image of God if you were created by him you are his beloved he loves you so let's read this here we go a psalm of David the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Picture it. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Notice what I underlined for that. You can go ahead and underline the word he in your bulletin if you want or in your Bible if you're comfortable with that. And the word his... Because that was the focus of those verses. We're giving testimony that he is my shepherd. He makes me lie, lie down in green pastures. He is caring for me and you. Now here's the shift. Here goes verse 4. Are you ready? Let's read it together. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. <coughs> Notice the difference. We went from saying, he did this, he is this, he, he, he. I wasn't laughing. We went from he to you, which is more personal. It would be like if I did this and I said to you, PR is my husband. He mows the lawn. He takes care of the trash. He provides wood to keep the house warm. You fix the cars. You clean the floors. 
We take out the kitty litter. <laughs> True love right there. Did you see the difference in the personal? I'm not just talking about him. All of a sudden we're turning and talking to him to say thank you. I appreciate those things. In the same way, this psalm is the Lord is my shepherd. He <clears throat> does this, he does that. All of a sudden, you are with me. And when is he with us? In the dark valleys. The dark valleys, it becomes more personal. And he walks with us, no longer leading ahead, which is what a shepherd does. He leads ahead and we follow, which is important, but a very personal. Now, I'm walking beside you because this is a dark valley. Anybody having dark valleys? Okay. We all know what dark valleys are. We're going to look real close at what dark valleys are and what it means to have him walking with us. So even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can't say it. Like, I can't say it ominous. I don't have one of those like really scary, ominous voices, I don't think. More like a cartoon voice or something I got. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I can't say it. I can't do it. You know what I mean? I can't do it. I can't do it. Anyways, let's look at the valley. The valley is figurative here in scripture. But when spoken, the listener back then would have actually pictured a literal valley because that's what they called a certain valley that was just outside of Jerusalem. Another name for that valley was called Hinnom. And those of you who have studied scripture and looked at Old Testament history, you might have recognized that name, Hinnom. It was a valley where really terrible things took place. It was a valley where other gods were worshipped and there was some unmentionable, really horrific terror just chills up your spine, never should have happened, things happened. And so that particular valley was one that was known as a really, really scary, awful, terrible place. So that's what would have flashed through the mind of the person who would have heard this song in the day that it was written. It's also known as an apocalyptic valley, Apocalyptic, big words for like end times. Very important to end times scriptures. This valley is. Another word for it is Gehenna. Another representation, what that means, Gehenna, and that's a representation of hell. That's how bad this place, this valley was, and how it was recognized as such because of what took place there. Everybody take a deep breath. I know this is heavy. Feels heavy, maybe. Because you're thinking of something that feels heavy to you. Not just something that brings fear to you, but maybe something that brought terror in your past. Something that had extreme trauma for you. And it's just something you don't want to dra drag up. Someplace you don't want to go. What's your valley? Even though I walk through a season of illness. Even though I walk through a bad doctor's report. Even though I walk through... The struggles of dealing with a wayward child, you might say. Even if I walk through the memory of a childhood trauma. Even though I walk through the pain of losing someone I love. You fill in the blank. What seems unbearable to you? Don't shout it out in your mind. What is your thing that causes you to feel most afraid? or feel most vulnerable, or feel most overwhelmed. Maybe you feel ashamed or alone. That's your even though. And what does this scripture say? Even though, the word yay is the one used in this, but even though is what that means. I walk through, you fill in that blank of what your valley is. What's the next line? I will fear no evil, for why? Lord, you are with me. Say that with me. You are with me. Lord, you are with me. When that thing creeps up and starts to overwhelm you, you can simply say, Lord, I'm starting to feel afraid, but you are with me. Lord, thank you for walking with me through this pain because I can't do it alone can't do it alone. You know, one of the commentaries I was reading and studying this week, it said something that I wrestled with right here. I really struggled because it said, here's, I'm going to read what this commentary said. It was one sentence and I was like, mm, I'm really struggling with that. It says, the dark valley or ravine 
is as truly one of his right paths that was mentioned in the previous verse. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. The dark valley is just as much a right path as just the green pasture. And I was like, hmm. need to process that one a little bit. Process this one for days. Thought it through, prayed about it, spent some quiet time. Let it roll around as you're doing dishes and stuff like that. Those are That's how I think on things. But here's what I came to. Our dark valleys come into our lives for many reasons. Some of them are consequences of our personal choices. We have a dark valley because we made a choice. We now have a consequence that feels like a dark valley. So sometimes that's our own personal choice. But not always. Sometimes we go through a dark valley because of pain that comes. It's like, I call it residual pain that comes from, from somebody else's choice. It's like a trickle-down effect. Somebody makes a decision and that hurts you because of... You want, you want to see something better there, or you want, you, it hurts you in some way, emotionally, because you feel sad about that, or broken about that. Sometimes somebody makes a decision that actually causes you physical harm or emotional harm, and that isn't your fault when somebody else chooses to harm you in that way. Sometimes there's painful circumstances that come into our life that are designed by Satan to trip us up. Scripture says that. So how can I look at all of those things and say, that's the right path for me. That's what God said. Come here. We want to, you know, I just have a hard time with my brain with that. And so those things happen. And Jesus himself said, in this world, you will have many troubles. Now, you've heard me say this. I like to say this a lot because I want everybody to know and understand that. <clears throat> we will have troubles in this world, but take heart, Jesus said. He said, I have overcome the world. So here's the thing. In those dark valleys that we find ourselves, the way I can, only way I can see that as a right path is that God wants us to go through and, and walk towards some of those painful moments in our past so that we can heal and come out the other side stronger. So we've got to, or he wants to, you, you've got to walk through a dark place. Maybe it's not in your past. Maybe it's very much in your present right now. And you've got a dark place you're walking through. You can't avoid it. It doesn't mean God is up there going, yep, that's what I wanted. That's, he's not. He's right beside you. Crying when you cry. Holding you when, when you need to be held. Taking your hand. Carrying you. Picking you up. And being your shepherd through the midst of that dark valley that you're in. I know this is really difficult to grasp a hold of. I read a book a number of years ago called Draw Near to the Fire. It was written by Terry Wardle, who is like, I call him my spiritual grandfather, because my mentor, he's my mentor's mentor. But anyways, Draw Near to the Fire. The premise of the book was draw near to those things that feel like you don't want to go there. Like, you have this memory. Let me just say we've got this memory, this dark valley. I don't want to go there. I'm just going to pretend that didn't happen. That is not going to heal you. I'm just going to say now that is going to stay within you. That is going to erupt at different times and come out. And it will not be pleasant when it does. Okay, so we've got this thing. I don't want to go near it, and I don't like it. It's 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 Whether it's from your past or somebody else has done or whatever happened... It doesn't matter whose fault it is. It's how is it there. we got to look at that and say, it is there. It is in my life. I don't want to deal with it. Not in, And maybe we're saying, you know what, I'm just going to go around it. I'm, I'm going to just skirt over here and skirt around it. You can't. You cannot skirt around it. You cannot jump over it. You cannot go under it. There's no avoiding these dark valleys. We have to go through them. Even though I walk through the dark valley. Because when you walk through the dark valley or draw near to the fire, draw near and walk through that, you come out the other side. Stronger, more refined, braver, healed, more like God created you to be. It says a valley of the shadow of death. The valley is a dark place because it's in the shadow of the two hills on either side. Think about it. Right? Yep. The 
belly is in the shadow. So that's the first part to get cold. It's the first part to lose the sun because the sun goes down and the hill gets in the way. And then one of the things I read that was like a, oh, I never thought of that. Listen to this. A shadow cannot hurt you. A shadow of something cannot harm you. Think about it. A shadow of something cannot harm you. Now, that made me think of a video Josiah sent a while back. I thought the shadow could hurt me. <laughs> I will show you. Not the easiest thing to see. It is a shadow of a spider for those of you who are going to have or You already figured that out anyway, didn't you? Okay. So if it's at toward the bottom of the screen, you can watch it. We might have to watch it a couple times. Ready? Oh. 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 Do you see that? Oh. See the size of that thing? I mean, all right, it's hard to see. Let's go back. Look at that. Look at the size that's bigger than his foot. <laughs> I'm telling you what, if I had walked out there in that moment and that shadow had crawled across my foot, <laughs> I think that happened at one point in the middle of the night. The entire house would have been awake. <laughs> if I had had that shadow walk across my foot, but reality is that shadow could not harm me. That's the reality of it. As much as I thought it could. I saw it on the screen on my phone when he sent it, and I was like, oh, oh. I had a hard time putting it on the PowerPoint. <laughs> but the shadow cannot hurt me. Notice at the end of the video, there would not have been a shadow of that spider had there not been what? A light that the spider was crawling on. And when he zoomed in on the spider, I mean, it was a decent sized spider. It was a big one. But it wasn't nearly as big as me. It's not as big as you. And sometimes we get our valleys out of perspective because we're so focused on the shadow of that thing that's standing in front of the light. And the light's trying to shine, but the shadow is looking enormously large to us. And when we really look, sometimes it, it will help us put things in perspective as to the grandness of our God. Because guess what our light is? In John chapter 8, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. So what are you looking at? The shadow or the light? The shadow or the light? So even when you're in a dark valley, this verse says, or feel that that shadow of darkness is going to overtake you, which I felt, and I think maybe most of us have felt that it, the shadow of darkness was going to overtake us, you do not have to walk in darkness because the light of life is with you. With you. So which is stronger? The darkness or the light? Which is stronger? Yeah. Because if you're in a dark room and you flip the light on, is it going to stay dark? No. Can you flip the darkness on in the midst of a room with a light on? You know? <laughs> The light is stronger than the darkness, especially when we're talking in spiritual terms. And we know that the light is our Savior, Jesus, who has already overcome the world and all the darkness that could be in it. Remember, there's a shift here from he to you. It becomes more personal. It becomes more personal. And we can be, because it says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. We can be fearless. I put this t-shirt on because it says faith over fear. And then I did a devotional on this verse today. And the first words were, guess what? Faith over fear. And I was like, whoo, faith over fear. Oh, I wish I could do that all the time. Don't you? I mean, I wish I, I've been working on this for years, huh? I've been working on being fearless for years. I'm still working on it. Still working on it. I have moments. You know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for in the moment that I have fear, in those times that I lose it a little bit and get a little bit afraid, I am thankful that God is still faithful and that he 
His promise to be with me does not waver, even in the moments that I waver. He doesn't waver. And you know, in the moments that you waver, now I'm not saying bad things about you, I'm just assuming that you're like me and that you have moments. Do you have moments of, you know? Yes. Okay, yes. Just, just making sure you're with me here on this. Yes. God is faithful. He stays with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So, we've got all we need in, in what he's providing for us as our shepherd. And then this verse goes on to say, Well, fear no evil. You are with me. Why? Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So let's take a minute. He is well equipped. It says that verse says he's well equipped to take care of us and meet all our needs. What are the rod? What are the staff? The rod is a club used in defense to drive away the wild animals or any other enemy that could come against the sheep. It could occasionally be tipped with metal or studded with nails to be a stronger weapon. Sometimes that would happen. The staff was probably a wooden rod longer than the club, which could be more used for support than walking stick. And so they have very different uses, but were both necessary for the shepherd to take care of the sheep. Some have said that they were for protection and direction, and we're going to look at that, protection and direction. When we feel protected and we feel like we've got someone leading us in direction, that takes away a lot of our instability and we have comfort and peace. So these tools could be used to maybe pull, them, pull a sheep off up a cliff. Let's say they fell over the cliff and they could reach down with their staff and pull it up. Or if the sheep got too far into the water and all of a sudden they're floating downstream, you could reach out with the staff and pull them in. I think there's been times we've been floating downstream because we got a little too deep and he gently pulls us back for our protection, for our safety, to save them from disaster. A shepherd could reach them from a dangerous ledge. I already said that. When they get too close to a cliff, use the weapon. He could rescue them. He could be used as a weapon when there's another dangerous animal coming to protect them. Anyone needed rescued? Anyone need saved? Anyone need protected? We all need these things because we're all human. And the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we all need rescue because of that. Jesus paid the price for our rescue, as Pierre said a few minutes ago. That's why those who know Jesus, you might have heard them say, He saved me. Jesus saved me. Jesus rescued me. You might have heard somebody say that. You might have said that yourself. That's why we say those things. If you're not sure what I'm talking about and you want to be saved or you don't know how to be saved, we're going to do that in just a minute. You'll have the opportunity to let Jesus be your shepherd. Here's the good news. You don't have to save yourself. It doesn't say anywhere in this scripture, you have the right tools. It doesn't. You don't need the right tools. All we need is Jesus. He has the right tools. He has everything we need. He is the one that rescues. Not me. I can't rescue you. The ark can't rescue you. Jesus. Jesus rescues. Jesus saves. Some have said that the rod and the staff are representative, and you could use them figuratively, of God's word and the Holy Spirit. Okay. I could go with that analogy. Because when we are in the midst of a dark valley, and we speak scripture with the power of the Holy Spirit, it gives us strength. It helps us to feel comfort. So I, I'm okay with that. That, that. that is a good analogy. And those are good tools that he has for us and he offers to us if we will use them. Think about our verse as we read it today. Think about the verse of the year for our church. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What a great verse to read when you're in a dark valley. What a great verse to bring out. Lord, I... No, you want to give me a spirit that is of power right now, and I'm not feeling very powerful. And he will help you and bring you comfort. Here's something other that's beautiful about this. You know, one of the things that the staff was used for was to count the sheep. The shepherd would hold it out like this, and the sheep would walk underneath it. And as they walked underneath it, he would count them so that he knew every sheep was accounted for. Nobody was missing. You know what that says to me? It says to me that God knows you. God sees you. He knows where you're at. And if you're missing, he will come after you because
because he loves you, not to punish you. Come after you to rescue and protect and bring you back to that safe place because he loves you so much. That's the point. Our point today is not just saying that Jesus is our shepherd, although that is important and the, the right place to start. And like I said, if you can't say that, if you don't know what I'm saying there, then, then by all means, Jesus wants to be your shepherd. He wants to be that one who saves you. But for those of us in the room that say, yes, I made that decision a long time ago, or I made that decision already, and he is my shepherd. For those of you who've already made that decision, maybe we need to make the shift from, instead of just talking about him being our shepherd and kind of having this relationship where he's over there and I'm over here, or he's over there and I'm over here, we're just talking about him. Maybe it's time to make that shift to where we are experiencing life with him. And we feel and begin to understand what it means to have him with us. At your side, walking through the dark valley, no matter what that means to you. But he is with you, having your best interests in mind to help you walk through whatever comes your way. In the video bumper that we showed, I loved the wording. It said, it may lead, this journey I'm on may lead through dark valleys, but I will come out the other side. I'm not afraid. You are with me. You're armed and you're ready. There's a lot of comfort and peace in that verse. We're going to quiet our hearts for a few minutes and pray. And I've got a few questions I'm going to ask while we're praying. Just take a few minutes to relax in the Lord's presence. He's here. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen our hearts and our minds to hear only your voice in these moments. And there will be transformations that can only be brought about by your Holy Spirit. Reveal to us your truth. Sanctify this space that we're in. And cast away the distractions in the name of Jesus. As you're listening to the Lord's voice. I ask you a question. Is the Lord your shepherd? Shepherd, I have another question for you. Are you allowing him to walk with you? Allowing his lead every moment of every day. Not just a few minutes in the morning or at night, but all the day long. No matter where you are or who you're with. question. 
to diagram on the back of your bulletin. It looks like a stone wall. If you don't have one, you can just think about it or write it on something else. Look up at the screen, it looks like that. If the Lord is not your shepherd, or if he is your shepherd and you're not allowing him into certain places in your life or your day, what's blocking you? is keeping you from making that subtle shift that we talked about at the beginning, from not just talking about him being your shepherd, but talking to him, recognizing that he's with you each step of the way. As the Lord begins to reveal a block to you, you can write it there in one of the rocks in your paper. Because there might be several. tearing that wall down so that the light can come through into your valley. Thank you for what you have revealed today. Thank you for the strength that you bring. You want to blast through our walls and our barriers. Recognize where we need tenderness and rescue us. Your children, your beloved. Oh God, 
continue to speak to them. Holy Spirit, show them your love like they've never known before. May they feel and sense your presence in a very special way throughout the rest of this day and this week and the rest of their lives. I pray this blessing over.